Okay, problem 6.12. Problem 6.12 reads, an infinitely long cylinder of radius R carries a frozen in magnetization parallel to the axis given by this equation. A where K is a constant and S is the distance from the axis. There's no free current anywhere and find the mag magnetic field inside and outside the cylinder by the two different methods. Okay, so for the first method, we use, uh, we, 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 put, we located all the bound currents as what we did earlier. And then from there, we calculated using Ampere's law, the magnetic field. Okay, so similar to our previous example, uh, this uh, cylindrical, uh, the cylinder, okay, will, uh, will be considered as a series of solenoids, okay, wherein their bound currents are along the phi direction, curling around the cylinder, within the cylinder and on the surface of the cylinder, okay? So that's the first part of the problem. Now, for the second part of the problem, we're going to do the same. Uh, we're going to do the same computation, but using a different method. So consider, again, so let's see. So this is your... Cylinder. Okay. So here we're given with your auxiliary field H, and we need to know, we need to use Ampere's law to find H. And then from there, we can get the magnetic field from equation 6.8. Okay, so notice this, this is much faster and it avoids any explicit reference to the bound currents. Now let's recall first the two equations. Equation 6.20 and equation 6.80. So from your book, equation 6.20 is your Ampere's law for, uh, for linear magnetic materials, okay, in terms of your auxiliary field H. So this is the integral, gross integral of H dot dm, this is equal to I enclosed, where your I enclosed should be the free. And then equation 6.18 will just be the relationship between the auxiliary field, the <coughs> magnetic field, and the magnetization. So from this equation, we can see that the auxiliary field the magnetic field and the magnetization align on the same axis or along the same direction, whether along or against that same direction. Okay. Now, the key word here is that, the key word that we should find in the problem is that there is no, sorry, there is no free current anywhere. So what does it mean? It means that the free enclosed current is zero, okay? So if the magnetization points along the Z direction, so naturally the auxiliary field and the subsequent magnetic field will also point either in the same direction as M or opposite direction of M. Okay, so from Ampere's law, we can first identify your Ampere loop, which is usually used, which is usually written as a rectangular loop of length L. Okay, so from Ampere's law, we now have, because of symmetry, your Ampere's law 
can now be simplified as h times the integral of close integral of dl because only this line is along the is because this line is the only thing that is along the direction of your magnetization and your h so therefore this term becomes l Okay, and this is equal to uh, zero. So this tells us that H is equal to zero. Then using this equation, you now have zero equals one over mu naught B minus M. where m is k as z hat. So this becomes k as z hat, which gives us the magnetic field to be equal to mu not k as z hat. And because this is considered to be inside your cylinder, so that means this magnetic field is the one created inside. Remember, this is R. Now, how about the outside? Now, for outside, for S greater than R, we know that there is no uh, material outside. So therefore, the magnetization is zero outside. And if that's the case, this will now be written as, this equation will now be written as zero equals one over mu naught B minus zero, which gives us the magnetic field outside to be zero. So this is for inside, and this is for outside. So you notice this is the same result. I'm sorry. Same result as what we as what we had in letter A. And this is much faster. 